Today, it's Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is post covering finance and property news. Another Monday evening and Edwin is with me once again. Edwin, how are you doing? Stay frosty, Martin. And that's all we can say, stay frosty. <laughs> In your case, uh, stay dry. It's been very wet down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't get a chance to uh, change. I'm, I'm drenched. I had to feed the chooks. Otherwise, if I don't feed them uh, before the show, uh, you know, they won't, they won't, they won't eat. And Jose keeps me up from two o'clock in the morning, asking where the hell's my food. But um, yeah, look. Uh, yeah, you know, people just got to stay. People just got to stay frosty, right? Because there's a lot of chatter out there at the moment. It's early days, and and, and it's a mixed bag already. But uh, but we, we knew that this was going to happen because of the low listing numbers, and we knew that uh, the uh, that people were always going to be uh, gravitating towards those homes that are uh, you know shiny. They look new and shiny and polished up, and uh, you know, with our fancy stone uh, bench tops and the, and the like. So. Uh, you know, all we can say is uh, stay frosty and uh, and be careful, more to the point, because not all the chines is gold. Well, that's spot on. Um, and I suppose, you know, there are some challenges in Australia, but I have to say that, um, you know, there are other places around the world, Grindavik in Iceland, right? They got a bit of lava on the doorstep, and unfortunately some properties were were destroyed. Um, puts things in perspective a bit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, look, we, we got our issues with uh, what that podcast that you put out uh, regards to asbestos in the in, in the gardens, in the, in the mulch in Sydney. So, I mean, it's which one's worse? Which one do you prefer, Mark? Now, I, look, if I'm going to be cynical, do you prefer instant death or, uh, or 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 slow death? I mean, you 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 went through it yourself with your wife, and and it was sad. And this is and, and now the the government don't uh, uh, don't want to take uh, don't want to take responsibility, and they're telling you, they're telling us, they're telling the people that hey, it's all right, it's all uh, uh, you know, it's all bonded together. You know, it should be right, mate. You can go and uh, throw your kids on the uh, on the swings, and uh, in in ten years' time, it's not our fault. Well, I, I mean, I was um, astonished and, and annoyed at this particular one. Um, so, you know, the Rizal Interchange, which is, of course, a huge, huge, huge project, right? Um, um, but they've found, um, quote, bonded asbestos in the mulch that they've used over the, over the whole of the um, parklands. Now, of course, this was part of a major project. Um, now, two points, Edwin. The first is that, Bonded asbestos is still asbestos. And it's not like they've got whole sheets of asbestos here. They've got bits of asbestos broken up. So trying to claim that bonded asbestos is fine and therefore there's no problem. And then secondly, they've only tested the air, not the, not the, not the mulch as far as I can see. I mean, this was a disgrace. Um, and they also don't know how many other places this same mulch has been used. So we could have problems with asbestos in a number of areas. And the point is that asbestos is in one third of homes across Australia. And um, getting rid of it is a real problem and it's quite costly. So guess what? People cut corners, dump it in all sorts of weird places and, um, you know, throwing it into um, uh, places where it ultimately can turn up as as asbestos in mulch is terrible, and of course kids get exposed, and as you say, it's a long, it's a long lag between getting exposed and getting, um, you know, the disease. So, and we still have yeah. close to a thousand a year dying from mesothelioma in Australia. It is a disgrace. Yeah, it's a, it's a slow. A lot of people don't realise how much asbestos is buried in the in their own backyards, Martin. In the, uh, you only have to go back to the. The, the the homes in the in the inner west have a field uh, five uh, a lot of these areas Ashfields your Ashfields I mean it's riddled with it uh, and, and, and yeah and there are people yeah turning the soil over in the in the backyard digging uh, veggie gardens and, and the like and and also in the in the in the North Shore uh, predominantly the upper North Shore and and also in in the mountains so you've got a lot of uh, a lot of these uh, these 
homes that have been you know up since the uh, 50s and 60s uh, that have got a lot of the the sheeting uh, under the homes uh, as well as in the garden beds because that's what they used to do. They used to just bury it in the backyard as they were building them, as they were uh, or, or or renovating. Uh, because it was, you know, it was just the thing, the the, the cheapest way to, the, the cheapest and quick, quickest way to get rid of things. Now you've got, uh, yeah, new new garden beds being uh, been put in place, and and, and post that you've also got your lawnmowers going over the old, uh, yeah, dirt and sandstone. I mean, it, it just this just keeps on uh, coming to the surface, and effectively the, there's 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 hundreds of thousands of homes around Sydney that have uh, that are contaminated and that are that are well you could use the term actively contaminated, meaning that the asbestos is floating around. Not to mention all the renovation works that are ca- being carried out uh, in the asbestos isn't removed uh, in a prop in an appropriate manner. You've got all the garages in in the western suburbs and also in in and around the. Uh, the, the Riverwood area, there's a there's a hell of a lot of them there. You only have to get on the railway line, and, and you, you see from the the west and southwest, it's all this corrugated sheet uh, asbestos sheeting uh, housing that's uh, that just sits by the way track, and, and and that's a contaminant. Then that people pull them down. I mean, we've talked about it, um, but the, the government really don't want to. They just want to sort of turn a blind eye. They don't really want to do anything. Any anything. Um, uh, proactive uh, about it, in yours, in my opinion, and, and as you said, Martin, this is one area where they found this uh, this, this crap. And what about uh, w- w- where else did they dump it? And, and then you go back, and why was it accepted in, in the you know uh, to be you know, uh, as a this contaminant? Why was it accepted? How did it get? How did it get included in the in the mulch? What other thing is there? Is it uh, look just recently? My um, uh, my son's uh, uh, mother, they, the, the house next to her, that got sold. Uh, and uh, you know, when I was living there, I, I know for a fact that uh, thirty, you know, thirty, thirty-five years ago, the old uh, the old goat that lived next door, bothered tipping all this shit. He was in in the in the mining area in the mining sector, and he couldn't be bothered the um, uh, all the chemicals that he bought back from. Uh, from the work that he did, and and not only that, but um, uh, I know that uh, one of the sheds that they had in the backyard, uh, it was just uh, you know uh, asbestos sheeting and disposing of it properly. This is going back a, a good thirty years ago. They um, they buried it in in the backyard, and this property had only just got uh, a month or two ago. It just settled a month or two ago. Uh, and um, I, I told uh, um, my son's um, my son to tell his mum, uh, yeah, she better she better be knocking on the door uh, of the next door neighbour because it's my understanding um, uh, they're, they're going to be, be building a granny flat. So I said, you better you, you better you know lay 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 it, lay it straight that uh, that, that uh, rear yard has to be. Um, Contaminated and 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 done properly. Uh, the, the, that the contamination there has to be mitigated properly because otherwise, you know, who knows what? Say who knows what the old goat uh, buried there thirty years ago. Well, that's the problem, uh, Edwin. It's um you know in many places, and one of the things I say quite often is that um, uh, you know you should assume that there could be asbestos rather than assume there isn't. And uh, that's the problem. Uh, and look, I've lobbied long and hard, both at the federal and the state level, to uh, get them to uh, be more proactive. But nobody wants to talk about this stuff. And in fact, the um, the COVID crisis that we had has actually made them even more wary of talking about <laughs> asbestos-related issues, right? Um, that There is no such thing as safe asbestos. You know, all asbestos is risky, and it's in places that you just can't imagine. You know, there's there's all sorts of different types of asbestos, and it's not just the um, the Mr. Fluffy stuff, the stuff that was pumped into roof spaces, but uh, there's you know 28 different types of asbestos um, manifest in all sorts of different things, and the problem is the disposal of it is expensive and difficult. And I've had several people horrifically sending me photographs of expert asbestos removers, quote unquote, stripped back 
to their waist, the waist, you know, so they've got the protective stuff, but it's because it's hot, they strip back to the waist <laughs> and are just exposing themselves to it. It is remarkable. Um, so that even the, even the professionals, quote, unquote, even the experts are actually making really bad mistakes. But the problem I've got is that this disease takes 20, 30, 40 years to manifest itself. So you can be exposed as a kid, but actually, you know, not get sick for quite some time later. That's the problem. It's not like an, it, it's an immediate disease that you immediately see the results of. What you're doing is you're, you're laying up risks for later. You know, in Jill's case, she did DIYs in her 20s and 30s. She died when she was 62. Um, that's the problem. And, and so it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, but it's not. It shouldn't be. And so whether you're buying property, whether you've got property, um, or whether you're even thinking of renting, think asbestos is what I say. Yeah, and that's something that uh, everyone has to be very, very, very careful with. Uh, and, and if you're going to do a renovation, if you think of buying something to do a renovation, uh, I always say, tell people, uh, you know, if, you, if you're really thinking about uh, considering uh, renovating the home uh, you know, post-purchase uh, uh, and, and, and there's um, – you know, a slight chance of, that there is asbestos there. Uh, I, I really, uh, my recommendations are to get it done before they move in. Uh, you know, get rid of the asbestos from inside the home at least uh, before before they move in, because uh, it's you know stuff that you just don't want to be mucking around with. Talking about talking about uh, you know selling or buying homes that are renovated or not renovated, Martin. I put out a feeler uh, to a couple of agents in, in Sydney on the weekend asking them how their open house inspections went. And lo and behold, you know, the shiny, fan-angled new properties, or not, not new, not so much new, but the renovated and well-presented properties are, are, are doing quite well. And and they're not 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 so well-presented, uh, are, are lagging. Now, it was interesting with uh, from one of the agents, uh, said a bit of a mix, mixed bag, had zero groups at some I actually called him up and asked him what, what that sum was, and he said, oh, the older apartment southwest, and 45 groups at others. Units and non-renovated homes had low numbers. Nicely presented and renovated had 20 groups plus. Um, and that's that's the nature of, of the market that we're entering, low numbers and people obviously very concerned about the construction uh, costs or building costs or renovation costs moving forward. Uh, whether or not materials are going to be, you know, whether we can have another, uh, uh, you know, uh, shortages again because of the issues in the in the Middle East, and, and likewise with, um, with with the other agent as well, uh, the the one that he refers to, I know the listing that he's referring to, and that is a very well presented and renovated home in 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 his patch, uh, but the rest that are just uh, as far as I was concerned, ordinary homes, uh, um, didn't get any at all. So. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a mix, uh, but definitely those that are well presented and, and well renovated are getting are getting the early numbers, Martin. But as as I said earlier on, uh, be warned and be careful because not all that not all that shines is gold. And if you're going to buy something that's renovated, you've got to make sure that it's been renovated uh, properly. Uh, you know, and um, get you know, and that all comes back to your inspection and 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 not just looking at the uh, at the surface, but trying to look look what's underneath the surface if you can. No, that's a very important point, and um, you know, uh, look below the surface is really important. Here's another example, Edwin. You you saw this, but um, the um, <laughs> building grants cost Western Australia. Four hundred and seventy-eight million dollars, but families are still homeless, right? So, so the top-level story of you know all this stimulus to encourage people to to, to get into property, um, it hasn't worked, and in fact, the government spent a lot of money, but we've got homeless families, and that's another example of where you know what superficially was said, and what actually is happening is completely different. And I think this is a really good, important object lesson about really understanding what's going on rather than just taking what the government says is going on. Well, this is, this, I think this um, coincides also with the fact that a lot of these grants were given to uh, first-time buyers that wanted to get, wanted to, to, to build, yep. wanted to buy, you know, uh, home and land packages. And, and 
and look at the shit that's going on in WA. I mean, there's more there's more foreclosures or there's more uh, sorry uh, there's more uh, uh, re- receiverships of, of building companies and and construction companies in WA. I think than any in any other state. So you've got a lot of there's some of our, some of our Twitter uh, our extra followers on you know on. Uh, uh, that uh, often tag me on posts of WA that um, of homes that have been uh, yet to be completed and they're being on a uh, let's say the on the the second stage or the third stage of the construction and, and they're being like that for years uh, and that's that's just one you know, next door to uh, my followers on X there uh, there's and there's a lot, there's a lot more and, and we know obviously from the mainstream media reports how many you know how dire the construction industry, the, the dire consequences that it's facing uh, because of the, the the fact that they, you know, a lot of a lot of them got caught with the fixed price contracts and, and now they, they can't complete the projects and they're in uh, they're in tug of wars or they're in uh, in, in litigation with, uh, with with the people that contracted them. So you know and, and I guess from that Martin is leads on to what the WeChat chatter has been uh, uh uh, over the last week, and I thought this was really interesting because it, it it also puts another nail in the in the construction coffin, as far as I'm concerned. Because so what you've got, what you've got is you've got the little brothers and the and the little sisters, right? The the, the general hands, uh, as we would call it in the industry, that that work with the 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 the, um, the, the Chinese um, uh, trading groups. Uh, and, and and they're very instrumental in a con, in in a construction, whether it be the renovation or whether it be the you know um, a, a new development uh, of, of strata development or or, or or single home, because there's a lot of work that labourers do, and, and a lot of them are uh, labourers to the different different trades. So basically, what's happened, Martin, is that you've got they've been um, they're basically being caught. In uh, in uh, over a period of time, say you know, three to four years, where they haven't seen their families, they haven't had the opportunity to go back and see the families because of the lockdowns. Because of the obviously, if you left uh, whilst the lockdowns were on, if you were one of the unfortunate uh, little brothers or little sisters, in other words, the 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 well, as we would call them, the ghost migrants uh, that stayed behind to work on a on a you know um, uh, daily cash rate. Or a weekly cash rate, um, yeah, you, a lot of them went, went back. Hence, the reason why we've got three at the moment because we we you know, we haven't been able to to bring in uh, uh, legal migrants that want to work in the construction industry. So a lot of the Asian, a lot of the Chinese, uh, um, you know, uh, ghost migrants that were working in the construction went back uh, during lockdowns, but they haven't been able to come back. So uh, a lot stayed. And but uh, for fear of going prematurely and not being able to come back, not being able obviously to get a tourist visa and then and then do the round again, uh, they they stayed. But you know, uh, the a lot a lot of them are now homesick, and and because it's auspicious year for the yeah you know, for the, in their culture, it's the year of the wooden dragon. So what, and because of the the fact that the um yeah the, there's a little bit more freedom of movement and going back, you know what they, they feel that they've had enough, uh being the being away from their families long enough, some have been away for you know six seven eight years, and, and they're going back with no hopes of coming back anyway, and they don't want to come back because they've made enough money over the last three years. Let's not forget that some of the some of these little brothers and sisters, in other words, they're just labourers. Uh, Bottom run of the scale, they've been making five hundred dollars a day, five hundred and fifty dollars a day, with a little bit more experience, with you know a year or two years experience, and right up to seven hundred dollars a day, cash in hand. You know, if you've had three or four years of experience in in a said uh, trade, so they've made they've made a motto, and they've they've been working, um, and that's on an eight hour day, and some of these guys have been working ten hour, twelve hour days, seven days a week for the last. Uh, two three years because of the the high demand. So, you know, they've made a lot of money whilst the sun was shining, and now they're going back. So this is going to put a another another nail in the construction coffin, and it's going to put a lot of pressure. And as I've been saying, uh, the the cost of construction is only going to continue because we can't we, we just don't have the labour force 
uh, in the manpower market. And so uh, this is rather interesting, uh, as I said, following from your article that you posted there about uh, how much the government spent. <laughs> and I can tell you what, the government's going to spend twice as much to get uh, to get that problem fixed because there's a lot of lot of unfinished homes and dwellings out there in renovation projects. No, it's absolutely astonishing. And uh, I've had quite a few people um, who are sort of caught because what they've done is they've committed to the purchase of uh, a particular property, home and land package. You know, they've paid the first tranche uh, and then it stopped. And uh, the reason it stopped is because the um, construction company has gone bust or uh, just can't get the parts or whatever or can't get the labour. And, and, and they've got no sense of when this thing could be solved. So, and so they're renting, waiting for this property to be completed. And, um, you know, they're, they're just uh, financially being devastated by, by this. And it's all really traced back to dumb government policy, both state and federal dumb policy, to try and pull people into the market, um, you know, because they needed to save the economy, quote unquote, um, it's, but it's really it's it, the way it's playing out. It's an absolute disaster, and uh, of course, the longer it goes on, the more likely it is that the cost of the materials will continue to rise. So, with the um, you know diversion of uh, shipping around uh, the Red Sea and things like that, um, it's just putting up shipping costs around the world. So that's going to have an impact in terms of the uh, the costs for materials coming to Australia. So, I'm afraid the story is not good here. No, it's odd, man, and this is one of the reasons why I, uh, in in my predictions that we posted up last week, I, I, I'm I'm a believer that in the Sydney market because uh, the the you know, a, a lot of people from other states are, are buying out uh, the Sydney market, and and this is where this is our space, this is where we work. Fundamentally, this is this is my backyard. So uh, this why this is why I say, and, and I'm holding on to that um, that um, prediction that we're going to see. You know, uh, uh, you know, in a lot of areas, upwards of five to ten percent uh, continual growth in established established homes because the cost of construction is just going through the roof. Now, I was talking to my son um, uh, last week as well, and 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 I said, "Look, can you bring me up to date with uh, the cost, the average cost to uh, to build a uh, you know a two bedroom apartment or in a, an apartment in a high rise development?" Just an average on you know, um, uh, and, and I said, uh, are we still are we still tracking between five hundred to five hundred and twenty? Dad, you can add another five percent to that uh, because you know anybody that's worth the the the, the soul, the grain of soul is not not going to charge anything less than five hundred and fifty thousand. Now, when you talk about five hundred and fifty thousand to build, then you talk value of the land per lot because you know development sites are sold per lot. Uh, and on average, if a if a if a lot um, is, is is you know in terms of the value of the land is worth uh, on average now hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's that's eight hundred thousand dollars, right? Eight hundred thousand uh, dollars to come in. Apart from co- that's nine hundred thousand dollars by the time you you amortize everything else that that's included in the cost. So it's nine hundred. So you're telling me that you're going to be selling a one-bedroom apartment in in, in Liverpool for nine hundred thousand dollars? I don't think so. And that's just to—that's not even to break even. You're still going backwards because then the government still hits you on the sale. Uh, and so, so th- th- this is why a lot of developers aren't building, uh, and they don't have the balls to build because that the hamstrung. This is why I said in in a previous podcast last year i said they're waiting they're sitting and waiting because they know uh, they know that the government is going to is going to basically subsidize the construction because they're not going to put their money that's not at those figures and not knowing whether or not they're going to finish the project right so this is that that is why i say that you know fundamentally when we when construction costs are so uh cost prohibitive um, you know, established dwellings are going to uh, are going to go up in value until such time that we see a hell of a lot more uh, new new dwellings uh, appear, uh, on the market for sale. Now, that's just my point. Right, and you also make another point. I saw in the in the show notes here that um, the silent tiger story. Right, so some of those from India were able to 
buy, hold, and then sell their property and then come to Australia with, with a significant amount of money in their back pocket, which means, of course, there's more demand from people who can afford to pay more. Look, that's it. And, and this, is where, this is where we've got to really focus on the uh, those that are looking at getting into the market. We've got to really focus on the the, the poor sale numbers on market and, and stop listening to the bullshit, no matter no how fanciful, you know, whether it's at your website or or you know, how fanciful the name it's got and whether the tracking uh, listing prices. I mean, you just got to be very, very careful because, look, the, the demand, as I said in for, for this year, there's a lot, there's greater demand. Uh, you've got the silent tigers, you've got the witch out chatterers, and you've got the you, you've got the new kids on the block um, that are looking at investing in in in, in this market. Uh, we're going to talk about the the uh, those numbers that you put out in your other podcast with regards to the uh, uh, yeah the the, the 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 different percentages of growth um, yeah you know, from last year in terms of uh, loans and so forth. Uh, just to bring this into perspective. But so I was having a conversation with the silent tiger and and, and he tells me, um, uh, I'll, I'll give out his detail, uh, yeah, he tells me that in uh, in the city that he's from, uh, him and his wife are from, he bought a uh, an off-the-plan apartment six months ago, six, seven months ago. This is in India. For the equivalent of, it tells me, yeah, roughly four hundred to $500,000, uh, let's round it up, five hundred thousand dollars, and he's he's telling me that six months later he can now sell this apartment in India for seven hundred thousand dollars, Martin. Now wait for it. Completion completion for this apartment is twenty twenty six is uh, uh, completion. Now he can hold until twenty twenty six. And, and and you know and you know, you know toss a coin and see if he's going and he'll get more for it. More than likely he will, he believes. But he's making a decision whether or not to to sell uh, over the next three to six months. See how how much uh, capital growth he's had without without doing much other than putting a five percent deposit. So that's his story. And I said, well, what's why why is property you know got, gone up so much? So he said, over the last three years, due to the pandemic, due to the lockdowns and everything in the, in the global pandemic that we've just gone through, the properties in in that town, in that city, in in India, and I'm sure it's uh, um, somewhat similar across uh, uh, other cities, properties have gone up in value in India in the last three to four years, uh, in the last three years or so. Um, three, two to three times, Martin. I mean, that's absolutely flabbergasting. Now, I said, why is, yeah, apart from the, so then he broke it down and he said that it's wages have gone up, have tripled, quadrupled. Uh, uh, banks are more, you know, uh, more, you know, uh, it, you know it, it's easier to, for them to lend, you, to lend it to you, that they're more open for, for lending because of the fact that. Um, a lot of the, the the Indian community are, are, are earning a lot of money, obviously, because of uh, uh, a lot of overseas companies outsourcing uh, to uh, for a lot of different uh, things, IT, you know, um, call centers, you name it. You know, they, they've basically outsourced it to to India, so they're making a they're, they're making a killing, if I could use that term. Um, they're, they're making a mozza. So property prices there. Uh, for a lot of the locals, obviously, they have become have become unaffordable. But to climb that much, so now you've got to look at the a lot of the locals here. As I, I think I mentioned before in the last podcast, uh, I may not have, I may have just put it up on um, on Twitter. Is the fact that, or maybe just been conversations with other with, with other people, the the um, a lot of the Indian families that were once thinking that their children were going to go back to India and they were going to you know, keep the home, keep uh, the, the family homes there or investment property there so that the kids can can enjoy it and that. Guess what, Martin? The conversations that I've been having with a lot of uh, Silent Tiger families is that the kids have just told their parents, we're not interested, Mum. We're not interested, Dad. We're not interested in going back. Just sell the bloody thing. Uh, bring the money back. To Australia and, and buy us a better home here. So that is why 
say that the demand is is greater. So it, things are becoming harder for the local Aussies because of the stuffed up policies with our, our politicians over the last two and a half decades. But guess what? There's a lot of money coming in from overseas, and this is going to put another uh, a greater burden on the uh, on the first time buyers, the poor bastards that are trying to get into the market here. Uh, you know, the, the local Aussies that are trying to get into the market. Yeah, and um, it's worth just reflecting. <clears throat> You know, the, the large population bases in India and, of course, in China relative to the population of Australia, right, which means that there's a potentially a big hopper, you know, of people who are thinking, well, maybe we, we, we will actually think about Australia. And, of course, that's why the migration program that is massively too high at the moment is part of the problem as to why we've got a property market the way it's developing. Um, and, uh, unfortunately... Not many people really want to highlight this and talk about this, but it seems to me it's a very important and I mean, a critical issue because what it's doing is it's pricing out local Aussies and forcing them to live further out or to, to, to buy a unit rather than a house. And it's just distorting the property markets, especially in our main urban centres. Look, 100%. And in, 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 in the meantime... Um, yeah, we 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 we're having more and more issues in in building, like our our our, um, our fellow builders in 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 Newey or in Newcastle. Now, you know, from that article that I sent you, yeah, the the, the article. Look, I renamed the article, and it's and it, and my my title to the article is, so you thought you could move in, when exactly? <laughs> so, <laughs> or you, we, could, we could title it we really can't build <laughs> we, or we really can't build uh, so the sunset clauses have, have stretched to 2026 for the Wickham apartment buyers so this is that uh, uh, that um, uh, report that we did uh, mid last year I think it was yeah. uh, of issues that the Wickham apartment that complex was having over in Newey the, with the sinkholes uh, appearing around the uh, around the basement area and everything. So it's now, so uh, from, from when you read the article, I mean, that there was a, the delivery, that there was, a, they were going to be waiting three years. The sunset clause was three years. Now the sunset clause has been, uh, has been extended to 2026. It, I find it interesting that the developer and the, yeah, the, the developer says, well, you know what, there's, you know, the, 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 the people that bought of, uh, you know, they, they've got a, they've got an upside, right? So they've got an upside because their apartments, the properties are worth more. And, and he blames the finance, uh, financing uh, to, to be the issue as opposed to, uh, as opposed to the, um, the, the, the construction issues that they, that they've been facing. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a joke. It really is a joke. We just, we simply can't build. I keep on saying we're building to, uh, on the floodplains, we're building on the river plains, we're building on uh, on uh, next to riverbeds and in, in, uh, right next to the shore where where we shouldn't be digging. We should be you know, going. Yeah, you know, the first two three levels of the complex should be the should be the parking uh, levels, and then whatever you build, you know, whatever residential uh, you build above that because of uh, because of the topography. But they don't listen. They don't want to know. And there's too many uh, brown paper bags, or sorry, or Aldi you know, reusable bags going, you know, uh, uh, going in and out of the, um, the, the the local council chambers. <laughs> we can't keep control of that, right? So this is crazy. It's absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, and uh, that's my point again about um, people being faced into an unpredictable scenario when they don't know when and if the property is going to be completed. They don't know what the price will be um, when it's completed, if it's completed, and they've got no idea about the quality of the construction of the property that's being built. And uh, you know and I know that um, one of the pressures that uh, many builders are under because of the cash flow problem is to cut back on the quality of the construction. It's, you know, the, if they can use cheaper materials, et cetera, et cetera, they can save a bit. Um, it's a nightmare. And it's only going to get worse, Martin. It's only going to get worse, and and we're going to be ninety five thousand or so dwellings in uh, across uh, all of Australia. I mean, that that's you know uh, how many short one hundred and sixty thousand short of the uh, two hundred and fifty thousand target uh, or thereabouts. 
um, and we're already short for for last year. And only thirty thousand dwellings were completed in in that apartment strata lots and, and freestanding homes. Thirty thousand were completed in Sydney uh, in in the you know, in in twenty twenty three. I mean, this is crazy. This is why I say what I say. These are why uh, you know it's. Yeah, I, I shouldn't even call them predictions because it's just it's just gonna. I can't see any. I can't see anything unless we get a hell of a lot of listings. Unless we and uh, and I, I said it last year at the beginning of last year. We uh, we need to see double the amount of uh, for sale listings in Sydney for the market to for for us to quench the current demand. And it's only going to get it's only going to to get worse. Uh, you know, or as you said, Martin. Uh, you know, uh, Families, young families, are going to have to start either. There's one or two things: either you either be prepared to pay more, either or three things: you'd be prepared to pay more for the for for the polished up properties. Uh, you that um, you know, you're going to you're going to uh, risk navigating through the renovation because nobody else would want it, so that you got to stand a better chance of getting that, or you simply pack your bags. And relocate to yeah you know, to uh, further afield where your dollar is going to buy you that that little bit more or or, or what you want uh, and a lot of changes and and all this has been forced upon us uh, due to the policies that, that that have been brought up put by um yeah, by the state and, and federal governments so look it's not it's not getting in it's not getting easier uh, and your um, your podcast on your 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 video or podcast on the household. Or, I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, I uh, I listened to it today, and and you know, it's just yeah. You, I was asking as I was listening to you, uh, yeah, to that podcast. I was thinking to myself, so many families. What are they doing with that in order to just to 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 to, to keep the roof over their head? It's 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 it's, it's almost criminal. Yeah, I'm. I have to say, when that uh, th this is based on data from the ABS, which uh, I, I call the um, <laughs> the fiction factory, right, because of the way that they uh, produce some of their statistics. But uh, that was a bit tongue in cheek, but not completely. So, so basically, it showed that the that the latest rental um, statistics were all over the place. But very importantly, the lending is growing. And lending for both investment property and for purchase of property is growing. It's growing quite fast. But the spending patterns, which is the other data they released at the end of last week, show that people were spending less. So as you say, what are they not spending money on? Well, some of the basics that, you know, things like healthcare and what have you, that they're going by the by, but they're spending more. <laughs> more on getting this credit to be able to get a property, to be able to get in and play the, the property game. It, it, it's a nonsensical situation that, that we find ourselves in. And it's, look, I, I've been talking about this for a long, 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 long time. And, um, you know, a lot of people are saying I'm just, um, you know, doom and gloom. But you can't go on like this, right? The, the, the more that you actually extend the elastic and the more that people are spending of the disposable income on what clearly is unaffordable property uh, is just going to create a massive issue ahead. And what I don't understand is, um, you know, how how this can be allowed to continue. So lending standards ostensibly are tighter, but in practice, people are able to borrow more. And um, I may have mentioned to you that when CBA put out a recent report, they assumed that a typical household had two full incomes going to be able to pay the mortgage. <laughs> so, I mean, that isn't necessarily um, a very valid assumption for many types of households. And then there's, there's other costs too. So, you know, the other thing that's interesting, this is the latest uh, insurance price changes. Um, and you can see there that the costs of insurance have gone absolutely through the roof. So this is yet another example where, in some cases, what people are doing is actually giving up on insurance or cutting back on insurance, not having contacts insurance, only having basic building insurance if you've got a mortgage. Um, so people are making hard decisions and trying to make trade-offs, but they're still borrowing ever more. And in fact, the, the size of the mortgage, particularly in Queensland, was dramatically up. And yet the spending from households 
if you look at it comparing discretion with non-discretion, in other words, the things you have to spend money on versus the things you'd like to spend money on, well, it's all going on this discretionary, non -dic the non-discretionary stuff, the stuff you've got to buy. So you're having to spend a lot more on the things you've got to buy. You're spending a lot less on the other stuff. Um, and real incomes, of course, are not, are not catching up. So this is, this is a, an impending disaster, which is why in my, in my show I was saying, how is this going to work out when you've got high interest rates for longer, when you've got people being able to spend less on things and then are borrowing more? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, I think I think I'm up to prediction number fourteen, or uh, I, 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 I can't remember. So, my, based on that, based on what you just shared, I think prediction number fifteen, and this is this is going to be out there. Prediction number fifteen for me is going to be that. Uh, listen, how's this going to keep on going? Uh, is um, is we we got to bring in more money from overseas, and by bringing more money from overseas, I, I, I'm going to give it three months. Uh, before the the the, the uh, Albo and Co. Uh, Albo, uh, Albo and Partners Real Estate Agency uh, restart issuing the, um, uh, the, uh, the 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 visas for for those that want to the, the investment visas as, as as some would know them as. In other words, you when you come over with you know, x amount of dollars to put into uh, property shares and and business in in Australia, you get you get granted an automatic visa. At the moment, they're on hold. But uh, I give it three months, Martin, and, and, and yeah, that those gates will be open up again. And guess what? There's a hell of a lot of people lining up. There's a hell of a lot of people lining up all over Asia, uh, in, in parts of Europe, uh, to you know, to to park their money in our in our shores, which again puts more pressure on the locals. And if the numbers keep on uh, keep on tracking low in all, uh, the 2023, which track lower than 2022, then we're yeah, the uh, the Aussie butlers are in a lot of uh, are in a battle, to say the least. Yeah, well, they're called battlers for a good reason, aren't they? Let's look at the numbers because you you know you segued into them and it is actually quite interesting. So, this is the um, numbers on on market listings uh, based on the eighth of January, so twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty six, and if we jump forward to the fifteenth of the first. It's gone up, thirteen thousand four hundred ninety-three. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting um, um, turn up for the books. Um, so we are seeing a few more listings coming on. Yeah, look, it's a healthy rise, but we we spoke about we, yeah, it's a healthy rise not, uh, to say the least. But uh, it's still low, uh, but it is a healthy rise, and and, and a lot of listings come up early, uh, even on the twenty fifth and twenty sixth of 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 um, December last year because. And a lot of um, uh, auctions happening on the, you know, I believe on the third of February, uh, because of the uh, you've got the Australia Day weekend, and you've got uh, the, um, you know, the well, as we know the Chinese New Year uh, slash Spring Festival, so in and it hits uh, early, you know, um, early in uh, February. So we've got a, you know, so we've got a bit of a compression, which is which is good, but. So, but you, you still need to remain frosty. You still need to remain uh, uh, cautious and, and you know, as to you know, what else is going to come up. And it, it is a healthy rise. We just got to keep on tracking it now and comparing it to the other years. Uh, so you got Melbourne. Melbourne still tracking almost twice as many listings as we have in in, in Sydney. The uh, the land uh, the land divisions are. Uh, 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 you know, climbing once again, there are you know, the, you've almost got four times more uh, more blocks of land being sold in Melbourne uh, than than what you have in um, in the Sydney region. You know, obviously, because of the issues that they have there, uh, and uh, the interesting one, uh, not for any other reason than for you know, to share on the podcast, is the uh, is the the, uh, the Brisbane numbers. Uh, yeah, the, the the Brisbane region they're really low, so obviously there's a lot of demand there. And the chatter that I've had on uh, on the social media posts is that um, yeah, even uh, you know uh, from only one, it's only uh, one individual, but saying that uh, yeah, there's a there's a bit of interest there in in the Brisbane region from the uh, Silent Tigers as well. 
Yes. Well, it's interesting because the latest data on, on property price movements and things shows that, in fact, Queensland is where there's quite a lot of momentum. And as I said to you, the, the average loan size was up again in Queensland. So that market is behaving very different. Now, some of that could be the Olympics. Uh, some of that is also migration from other states. But you're dead right. We're also seeing some overseas migration coming into Queensland as well. So it's all sort of coming together. Um, and um, remind everybody that, of course, some of those areas up in particularly up north of Queensland are being um, inundated with a lot of rain and, and floods and things. So the supply of property is also um, somewhat diminished. And did you see today that, in fact, Queensland is now offering um, vouchers to try and get tourists to come back into some parts of Queensland because they're now worried about the uh, imp implications of uh, uh, many tourist uh, businesses not actually being open simply because of all the floods and things. So Queensland is looking a, a bit wobbly to me, despite the fact that the numbers are very, very low. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that uh, that plays out in the, um, in the weeks and, and months ahead. So um, tricky times and I think the other point to make, Edwin, that the quality of what's coming on the market is quite interesting, right? Clearly, there'll be some people who have decided to, to list and sell. But quite a lot of the property that's coming on the market is still these sort of uh, inferior ex-investment properties, which need a lot of work on them. So, um, you know, the, the number tells you part of the story, but also the quality of the property is also a very important question, too. Yeah, definitely, and, and and this is where you know you you've got to be ever so careful. Also, in the you know in the in the Melbourne market, where the the, the rental numbers are very low, but uh, the, the the listings on market are very very high because they're um in the, uh, you've got the quality, but you've also got the, uh, the 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 regulations and what you can and you can't do with them, and 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 you know they've. You know, people wanting to wanting to get out of uh, out of Melbourne because the listing low. So we can again reiterate the fact that uh, a lot of those uh, investment properties that are being sold, um, a lot of the properties that are being sold are from uh, you know, from investors because there's so such low numbers in. Uh, um, yeah, the the rentals in Sydney they're um, you know again tracking low, still very very low for you know. Yeah, it's still early days. Hopefully, um, I, again, I, 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 I the, whether they're going to get any higher, Martin, like because uh, I am seeing in the, a lot of the chatter on WeChat and and now with the you know, with the new kids on the block, with the you know with the the, the group that, that we're now involved with, with the uh, I mean. And and also the Silent Tigers. I mean, these are three communities that are very active uh, with property. But in in these communities, are also not only very active with investment properties, but they're also very you know a, a actively um, uh, room letting uh, or you know in the uh, accommodation uh, sphere because um, and, and because they live locally, uh, they've got the local properties they can. Um, yeah, pick up the uh, pick up the cash on the weekend, uh, and and that's another reason why I think we're going to see uh, these rental numbers in Sydney uh, not get much higher than what we are seeing them right now. So a lot of rental pain continuing into twenty twenty four, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely right. And um, again, I, I noticed that uh, some of those um, rental properties uh, are now being sold rather than actually being let, um, which now you could argue that that would actually benefit um, prospective purchasers. But of course, then going back to our other argument that quite a few of those people who are interested in purchasing some of these perhaps older properties that need some work doing to them are people who are going to be able to sort of slice and dice them and put the bedroom count up from what, four to eight or something, and, and, and then let it out again as... Um, something which is um, a very different style of accommodation. So actually a lot of other people don't get, get, get a look in. And, and so this dynamic, not, not uniformly across uh, the place, but in some areas is, is quite profound now. And uh, the other observation, and it's true very much in, in Melbourne at the moment, that the regulatory environment is such that it's very hard 
expect for many investors to be able to make any returns on investment property at the moment. So the negative yields in, in Melbourne are continuing to, to rise at the point when, in fact, they have to do more to be able to keep their property let. So another reason why maybe more will sell. So it'll be interesting to see whether we start seeing that same strategy in the Melbourne context where people buy a property and then um, you know split it up into even smaller and then and then lease it out again. I'm not sure, but certainly in Sydney, that's what we're seeing. Yeah, I don't think so, Martin. I don't think so. I don't think it'll happen in in, in Melbourne as it does in in, in Sydney. Um, it's like you say, the, the the regulations are are such that it's it's a bit harder to do, and there are more. Pardon, the, pardon me saying, but there are more whinges in Melbourne than there are in Sydney, and they'll they'll, they'll whinge into the yeah, and. The, the, the communities that do that, are, you know, keep to themselves. I mean, and uh, I don't believe that the that the uh, WeChat community is what you, you've got them here in Sydney. Uh, also, the uh, Silent Tigers and um, and the, you know, the the new kids on the block. A lot of it's really it works here, and they're all saying. Um, but and that was one of the reasons why they 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 made the call last year to get out of Melbourne. Uh, because it, it, you know, it's easier to control here. A lot of the trades group, the Mies and the and the and the Chinese trades groups are, uh, are here. So you've got a lot less of that. Uh, those groups in in, in more winges uh, and in in more people, more people that um, you know push for your traditional. You know, your traditional type and form of of markets, and look, yeah, it, it's 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 just that much harder. So, um, and this is what they, they they'll pay the extra to stay local, keep like their investment local. And let's face it, these these are people that uh, they they make they're, they're buying property not to sell. They're buying property for uh, you know to hold hold you know for generations. Uh, they they they're not buying to 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 flip. They're, they're buying to, uh, to 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 hold if they're buying in a family group. It's different if it's a business or a syndicate, but that's the uh, that's their game. Yeah, so it's yeah, I, I don't see it happening. Not 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 anytime soon in in Melbourne. Not until they get a new government. <laughs> Very well, and uh, just to, as we mentioned, the auction series and really hasn't kicked off yet. So the auction statistics are are very low at the moment, as as, as you perhaps expect. Um, we would expect those numbers to start rising as we move into February after the, um, you know, after the Australia Day and everything else, and people come back to uh, back to every uh, you know normal life after the summer. Ah, uh, and there's a cat <laughs> going to express some opinions about uh, the auction numbers. Yeah, this is dusty. Yeah, the, the, the well, the, with regard to the auction numbers, Martin, the only thing I've uh, I'm going to contribute for tonight. We got to the auction numbers. Is uh, Tom Panos's uh, AFR uh, uh, quite, you know, not looking too good? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that, uh, uh, <laughs> Sweeney Sweeney said the uh, the illustrious the illustrious AFR uh, property um, a reporter said, according to Tom, the, the there was a surge of listings and. And everybody was, you know, tripping over themselves or something along those lines. Um, uh, you know, sort of uh, elasticizing the truth a little bit. You know, that they were tripping amongst themselves, wanting to get first big first cab off the rank to auction off their properties uh, at the end of the month. Well, they've got two weeks, <laughs> and those numbers aren't looking good. No, indeed. Well, we'll 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 see we'll see how things play out. Obviously, we'll keep track of the numbers as, as normal. And uh, as we come to the end of the show, Edmund, um, very important, <laughs> almost a health warning here. Look, it is. It's so. I was at the. Uh, uh, I went to the paint shop to helping one of our clients that's uh, that's looking at uh, that actually uh, uh, preparing. We're helping him prepare his home for sale, and and we have to, um, yeah, uh, have to organise the tradespeople at, at his place and so forth today. And and one of the main uh, trades. That are starting with tomorrow. The uh, is, is a painting crew there, and so we went to the paint shop, 
Uh, and we're just you know, chewing the cud, you know, uh, having a sing with the with the with the, with the with the attendant there, with the guy behind the counter, and good old Dave starts talking about uh, off the roof. And, and so, so you know, cut a long story short. Um, after a five minute, five or seven minute, or so conversation with Dave and another painter that turned up. Having a you know uh, uh, you know uh, a chat about falling off the roof in 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 stormy days or wet days, Martin. In the last six to twelve months, in the Shire, there have been there have been two people that have fallen off the roof and have passed passed away. One of them was a, a neighbor of the client that we're trying to help. Uh, yeah, we're helping him prepare his home for sale. Um, so two deaths, uh, one of them being my, you know, the, my client's neighbour uh, from you know, uh, a few houses down the road. Uh, the painter was uh, painting a house that's been put on the market for sale for the same reason. And Dave, behind the counter, had fallen off the, his roof as well and he'd landed on the carport. Because and he said he only injured his uh, only injured his his, his ass and his hip, and, and there was another uh, old mate that Dave was talking about that cracked his head and he was lucky to to still be alive. So the tip is, yeah, if you're not if you're not as mobile as you know uh, as what you were uh, before, you know, don't get on the roof. Don't get on the roof, and it, you know, and you just got to stay away from the. And don't, for God's sake, don't get on the roof when it's when it's it just started to rain, or it, it just rained, and, and, and the, you know, the tiles or the or, or the corrugated sheeting is and you know or whatever clip or whatever type of sheeting, whatever roofing you got is is still wet, right? So it's it, crazy. It's crazy stuff. It's it's a it, yeah. It, it's a long way. And it's not 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 worth it. You know, the, the, uh, about three four years ago, one of my good mates, his father, got on the got on the ladder. His father was, uh, at the time was uh, 72, 72, 73, Got on the ladder because he wanted to save one hundred and fifty dollars on getting uh, the rear gutters cl- uh, cleaned. On the ladder, uh, fell off. Uh, cracked his head open and uh, went into a coma, and, and, and that's a price he paid just to save 150 bucks. It's not worth it, folks. No, very, very important point there. Gravity is not always your friend, right? particularly when you're yeah. up atop a ladder or on a roof, and as you say, if it's slippery. And uh, of course, uh, these days, the um, use of um, of tin and those sorts of things, and the way that the the roofs are constructed. Makes it quite difficult, and I do notice that even some of the professionals um, who use the various um, safety aids are more and more nervous about going up on ladders as well and on the roofs. So it's it's a re- and partly of course because the insurance costs are so high as well. So it's all part of that picture. So yeah, find somebody else to do it. Don't try and save a dollar and um, you know and, and lose a lot more just because you uh, are trying to save a dollar. Edwin, that's a very good piece of advice. I'm glad we got the um, end of the show without a, a major disruption. I have to say that I think the severe rain that you've got there has uh, messed with your internet connection a bit tonight, but we actually got through it okay with a few little stutters. So those of you who followed the show to the end, apologies for those little stutters, but uh, nothing serious. We certainly got all the main, main messages and all the, um, uh, the insights that you always offer. And uh, I look forward to next week, and I hope that it won't be quite so wet next week, Edwin. No, I hope so too. And I'll, go, I'll pick up the phone and give uh, uh, Elon a call, tell him to fix his shit. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to hand back his into the <laughs> you know, his, his satellite thing. <laughs> Well, that's the problem, of course, because satellites are um, disrupted by rain and cloud and all sorts of things. And uh, so there you go. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, have a great week. And uh, we'll look forward to doing it all again next time. All the best to you, Martin. See you. Take up. care. Take care. Bye-bye.